they set up the table with the little cranes. Let's go and check it out. It's probably like that all over. Oh my God, that's adorable. <laughs> Look at they did the entire table. Very nice. And this is the bar that I really don't frequent. <laughs> Not really, thank you. Not even water? I like the... Not even, I just had the lot. That's that's beautiful, I like that. Look at that. Yeah. Everything is pretty here. Oh, that's right, I forgot. It's the Bowman night. Yes, it did. It did. It went by so fast. He says we should rewind the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. I'll quickly, I'll quickly introduce the snacks for this evening. We call it the Capenta, and back home where you come from, you call it the anchovies, oh. or rather sardine. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the marketplace? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's so one of my favorite snacks. So you have them locally, huh? We have them locally. Oh, the they're anchovies. Anchovies? Yes. 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 Like this. You call them anchovies? One second. You call so them anchovies as you call, call them capenta. The, the capenta is actually prepared in different ways. And the first thing that we do is, once they're harvested, the sun right? And when the sun right, it's easier to transport them to different places. Sure. You can as well eat them as fresh and as well as they dry. Zambia shares a lake called Lake Kariba, which is bordered in between Zambia and Zimbabwe. It is a man-made lake, one of the biggest man-made lakes. Actually, it's the only man-made lake, the biggest we have in Zambia, mm. which is Lake Kariba. And the Carpenter was actually introduced <coughs> in that river, on that lake, the moment they finished building it. The reason being simple, the area where they built the lake, people were actually displaced and moved into other areas to provide for that whole project to happen. When that project was actually completed, it was a power hydro project. Hence, people needed to try and benefit of it and the ones that are going to be staying in that whole area. So they introduced the carpenter, which was brought in from Lake Tanganyika, which is in the northern part of Zambia. In Lake Tanganyika, they actually grow bigger than this size. And surprising up to now, the, the, the samples which they brought and put into Lake Kariba, they never grow as bigger as the ones that are from Lake, Lake Tanganyika. Mm. The ones that come from Lake Tanganyika, we call it in Pulungu. Pulungu is slightly bigger, slightly smaller than the actual sardines as well, but bigger than the carpenter. So what it is, is the people that used to work, or that used to work in that construction, uh, t um, uh, construction when they were constructing the dam, the people that remained in there, working under the power <coughs> utility company called, we call it Zesco. Their women are the ones that got involved into selling of carpenter. So what they would do is they would harvest it during jack moons using the carpenter rigs on the lake. It's actually the light or the big lights which they use. If you get into Lake Kariba at night, you'd be shocked to think that you're getting into a beautiful town. Come in the morning, it's all water that you see. Mm. Yeah. So at night, that's the only time that they actually harvest. It never takes time. Once it's harvested in the morning, it takes in between four to six hours to dry fully, just sun dried. Wow. Then they would pack it into another bag so that it can be transported to uh, further places. It's one of the dishes that's quite easy to prepare and very nutritious at the same time. Not only nutritious, it's readily available and slightly cheaper back home. Not everyone is able to afford to buy chicken, meat, but we carpenter is one of the main ones that is one of the foods that everyone is able to try and get. In as much as the price now is going a little bit higher because of the demand, because you can transport into better places. By then, there's a lot of countries where you take it, Zimbabwe, particular Botswana. Botswana is one of the countries that never had carpenter, but now they actually love carpenter and they support a lot of carpenter in that area. And the ones that stay pretty close to Livingston. They actually buy it the most from Livingston and take it into, into Botswana. So how we prepare carpenter back home is, once it's dried, you'd bring it, put it in warm water. Once it's in warm water a little bit, rinse it, remove it, 
and throw it into a pan. You can deep fry it or you can roast it. Put it on your pan, add a little bit of salt, roast it, you love it. Sometimes at home, I remember my grandmother used to prepare the most using the groundnuts. The exact way that Kasamba did in the afternoons when you're making peanut butter. They would, mm. they would roast the groundnuts, pound them, make peanut butter, get the carpenter, boil it a little bit in the pot. Whilst boiled in there, add the peanut butter in the tomato. Yo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you you would eat it. You would love it. It's very nutritious, it's got a lot of proteins. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of proteins and you'd, you'd keep eating it. All right, most construction companies, they always prefer buying carpenter and beans for, the, for their workers. Carpenter is easy to prepare, like for instance at lunchtime, they always just quickly get it in a bigger pot, prepare art, onion and tomato, they eat it. Mm -hmm. Right, are we ready to try and sample our local dish today? Sure. Sure. Okay. I love it. Let's see. Thank you. Can I see? Oh, perfect. Let's love the carpenter. Hmm. Like a, a fishy potato chip. <laughs> yeah. Crunchy. But it tastes like sardines. Mm -hmm. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Very good. Really? Uh, the women that were, the husbands used to work in that construction company when they're doing the dump. And where they had finished, a number of them stayed in there to do the renovations and carry on working with the power utility company. So what they used to do is, probably at lunchtime or after four o'clock, when the, the miners, when the, when the workers knock off from that whole area, women used to go into that area with big buckets on their head of carpenter selling. Mm. But the one thing they used to do is they would always go in there smartly dressed, painted lips, painted nails, painted lips and painted nails. So what the other, what the guys that used to work in the mines would say is the moment they see them coming through, they would say, the carpenters have come. The people that paint their nails. <laughs> the people that paint their nails, the people that paint their lips, they've come selling fish. So that's how the actual name of carpenter got connected with the actual <laughs> fish. All right, Gloria, we're ready. Fish, paint painted lips and painted time. nails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you used to call them like a painter. Oh, yes. The questions. So, okay. when a young woman Thank wants you. to go to college, it should be like, why not getting married? Do you have any problems? Okay? I need to answer my aunties. I need to give appropriate answers. Okay? But the thing is, it's not really, really common for someone to make a choice of not really wanting to get married. It's every woman's dream in our culture to get married. Okay? Hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Eraija. Uh, tonight I would like to introduce the menu. Our starter, we have pears in skin soup served with the breadsticks. The main course, we have white polenta and sweet potato. And we have beef stew. The vegetarian option, we have brown beans. And I will have a fish trap here from the farm and catch of the day. <laughs> catch of the day. Okay. Oh. Oh. Hey. 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 And the vegetable. We have spinach in a peanut butter sauce and butternut squash. Man, that sounds awesome. Our dessert, we have lemon meringue pie. Oh. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Sounds good. Women have always more like shunned themselves into either the reception area or into housekeeping. But we've completely seen a complete transformation now where there's been a lot of women that have joined into the kitchen. Whereas back home, we all know very well that it's the women that do most of the cooking. When you get back home, we relax. But to answer your question correctly, one of the things that's actually contributed the most is the remoteness of our camps. 
where very few people, very few women struggle to try and get and work in this environment. But in open camps, like for instance, we do have another camp, another sister camp in Livingston called Tokalea. We do have female chefs in the, in the kitchen there. And I think one thing that's contributing the most is the location where we are. It becomes a little bit hard for the women to actually do it. But the thing is, there's a lot of women that are in the industry now. And that's one thing as well where the government is trying to improve, to actually push in a lot more. Because they're saying women <coughs> must be empowered. It's one thing that's been pushed a lot onto the education sector as well, where they're saying a girl child must be educated. And now they're actually pushing for a free education all the way up to grade 12. That's for a girl child. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice. All right, so I would, I would like to add a, a different perspective from what you just mentioned. Um, that this dates back to the colonial period where remember Zambia and Zimbabwe were colonial cousins and uh, we were colonized by the British and so when our forefathers would go and work in the commercial farms it was hard work, hard labor and they would prefer to have their women stay at home and they go and work in the field mm -hmm. and so that culture is sort of carried on as well you know, you find here in Zambia and Zimbabwe, you find a lot of men in the camps and maybe one or two uh, oh. women because of that culture. But like he's explaining, the government, you know, and the non-profits, girl child support networks and stuff like that are also trying to empower the women. But it's, it's that culture that has carried over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I, I don't understand though because the boys weren't brought up to them, so how do they then learn to go to school? Yeah, yeah, yeah the they girls go. are in the kitchen with the moms and... Yeah, they, they go to a culinary school. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, any other questions? Just to let you know, in America, the best chefs are males. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the women Lots are brought up to cook mostly, yeah. the yeah. best yeah. chefs are males. I'm males. Yes. If medication is free, medication healthcare. In hospitals, did you get the question for blessing? Yeah. Yeah. Thank medication you. in hospitals is free. Thank you. Of the ages, but the government has actually introduced a lot more of um, medication or hospitals have been brought closer to the communities so that everyone can actually have access to uh, medication. Four major um, areas that actually drive the economy. The biggest one being the copper mining or the mining industry, then followed by the tourism, followed by agriculture, and lastly is the tourism industry. Zambia has been mining copper for years, since the 1950s and mm. 60s. In the 60s, the only area where they used to mine copper is in the copper belt, in the area called Ndola. It's a little bit, if, uh, if Ola had a map here, it's a little bit dark, I could have shown you exactly. But what it is, over the years, there's been new mines that have been opened up in the northwestern part of Zambia, where a lot more minerals have actually been um, found, as in uh, zinc, lead, uh, uranium, as well as some areas, and lots of copper. Most of the copper mines that we have, they're actually owned by the Chinese, in as much as the Zambia still retains, the government still retains about 25% shares. But 75%, most of them are actually owned by the Chinese. In as much as they're owned by the Chinese, a lot of local people have actually been employed in those areas. But there is a lot of exploitation, which comes as the owners of the mines, they would always to try and bring in their skilled labor to try and cover up. And the government is coming a lot as well to see that the local people need to benefit. They need to train the people that are working within the country. So they've stepped in a lot and just said that in, for every job where you have a skilled uh, person that's um, an expatriate, you need to have a local that has to work with them within a certain period. If it's two to five years, somebody has to pick it up and be able to move on. And the expatriates, some say they need to try and move on. It's been a little bit of a challenge in a sense that when a Chinese comes in, they'll bring in one person and the other person will bring in the other, other relative. By the end of the day, where you had two people, you're going to have 12. And that's easy, and that's where the government is coming to try and cut it as much as possible. Did you answer your question, Bessie? Yes, you did. Thank you. It's here. How did they come in and take over the copper mines? <coughs> the, the Chinese came in and took over the copper mines when we had a recession. Remember, the copper prices plunged in 2000 and 2001, 2002. 
the copper prices on the world market trembled. And we had companies like Anglo-Americans. Those are the companies that pulled out when the copper prices on the world market dropped out. Mm. And the Chinese had the vision. So all they did, it, despite everything, the prices on the world market dropping, they came in and pumped their own money. Most of the products were coming in, they were shipping them back into China. Mm. And so they still do. But now when the copper prices went, went up, and the companies that pulled out wanted to try and get back, by then they had already taken ownership of those areas. That's how they've actually taken over most of the mines at the moment. Very good, yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um, Lesson was talking, I think, more about Zimbabwe than Zambia, but that uh, there's a lot of unemployment. So if your future husband is unemployed, and um, he doesn't have a job, but his role is to support you and the family. What is the reaction of your family or you to the fact that your future husband may not have a job? Okay, like in Zambia, we've got lots of ways a man can make money. We've got farming, okay, a man can go fishing, there are a lot of ways. So like I said, in that isolation period, there are certain things that the boys are taught on how to take care of the family. So they're given certain ideas on how to um, handle a family if there's nothing, they're not working. So either way, to find a way. Maybe he will do a bit of farming and then those crops grow and then supply and earn a bit of money. So there's always a way. <coughs> So mm -hmm. yes. Find yes. 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 So even if a woman is working, has a good job, a man is always respected. Okay. No matter even if uh, our vice president is female, she bows down to the husband. Yes. Just like the so, USA. <laughs> 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 No, they still, we're still living in that world where a man is a man, you know. Once you're married, your wife, in as much as your wife is, um, had a good job and you're not working, they will still look up to you at some stage and say, you're the husband and you have to provide. That's the reason why in as much as we put our wives that are, have got a better job and we're not working, we stay at home, we try our level best to try and bring in and at least food on the table at the end of the day so that we're not seen to be... The hand has not been uh, playing a part in the house. Hey, Joe. So the head of the household is the, the man, it's not, and it's not based on who brings in the most money, being the head of the household. It's always the man. Always the man. That, that's the head of the household. Sure. Okay. Is it based on who brings the most money in the U.S.? Not necessarily. No. I think in the U.S. Oh, yeah. it's more of a partnership. We all know who's bossing our house. Yeah, you, hey, you're talking about it. formal versus <laughs> informal. <laughs> Did I put you on a spot, Joe? <laughs> yeah, right. No, I, I actually, in, in our particular situation, it's a partnership. Well, it, you know, it's a it's a fine line. For a Christian, the man is the head of the house. Yes, yes, um, right. But the reality in America is. It's more of a partnership because there are very few, I, in my opinion, there are very few families mm -hmm. where one income is going to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking here. <laughs> He's saying enough questions. <laughs> right. Dinner call up there. As soon as we have dinner, we're still going to get back into this area where I can actually prove what Blessing um, advised me just before you arrived. But I'm, what a group that I'm coming, you guys better watch out. Eh? It's America has got a lot of talent in that group. Look at this. There goes the crane. Mine's over there. I guess I grabbed yours. Yeah. Okay. What do you say? Thank you. You're good the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh. He's a crane destroyer. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, much, that thing dissolved so nicely. It's so sad. <laughs> Look at him disappear. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome.
<laughs> All right. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt your most beautiful conversation. <laughs> and I hope we all enjoyed our first course at the fire there. Yes, 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 yes we did. Yes. It was good. And uh, tonight uh, we have got uh, the Zambian uh, uh, tradition menu, which is being prepared over uh, there at the buffet. And uh, this is the uh, historical uh, food where you are going to tell the friends back in the United States that we enjoyed and tasted the Zambian food. <laughs> back in Zambia. Oh, oh yes. So sure. what we are going to do? I'm um, I'm hoping each and everyone to uh, taste our menu for tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, for tonight, I don't have segregation of gentlemen or ladies. What I'm going to do? Uh, I'm <laughs> going to allow you to make one single file together, ladies and gentlemen, straight to the buffet and enjoy our meal. Thank you. Oh, Mixed thank you. group. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> Should have had the fishermen go first. Unisex. <laughs> Sorry. So which one is a traditional? What's traditional? This is a peanut, peanut, in peanut butter sauce. Peanut butter sauce. Okay. Yes. And this, oh, catch of the day. this is the catch of the day. Yes. Good job, guys. <laughs> Look at that. And they smell really, really good. Yeah. They're better, they're fresh. Yes. 